Welcome to Us Engine tutorial episode 55. In this video, I'm going to show you how to visualize Us Engine raster data interactively with a graphical user interface. In the past two videos, I already show you how to visualize a layer interactively and also a vector data. So in this video, we're going to talk about raster data. Before we get into the details, I would like to show you the highlight uh, what you can do with the uh, interactive GUI to visualize uh, raster data. So I'm just gonna, gonna create this uh, simple demo here. You can visualize a, sim a single layer uh, raster data. You can also uh, visualize multi-layer uh, data and you can easily create, for example, a, a, a color map and you can select from a variety of color maps uh, without having to write any line of uh, code. You can also customize the uh, the palette. Uh, you, do, you can Select from the uh, available color. You can also enter the color palette uh, on your own. And uh, so you can also create a laser. Uh, they can be integrated with, uh, uh, with the map so that you can turn the layer on and off along with the, uh, um, the color map. So the next one here shows you how to visualize a um, uh, multi-layer, multi-spectral band. So for example, this is a uh, lens set data. You can also just visualize one single layer and you can note similarly you can change the Color map uh, to anything from the drop down list. You can also create the lesion to be to be associated uh, with the map. So this is what you can do easily with this uh, graphical user interface. Keep in mind, uh, this looks uh, very simple, but behind the scene, this um, interactive GUI contains more than one thousand lines of a code. So it's actually quite complicated, and you, sometimes you might have some bugs. So just uh, you, I want you to be aware. So next, let's go to the website to download the notebook example we're going to use here in this uh, video. Go to gmap.org and then click notebooks. Scroll down to find episode uh, 55, Raster VIS, and then upper right corner here, uh, click the link. Then you can download this one to your computer. I'm going to download to my downloads uh, directory. And then you can open your uh, Windows terminal or uh, Anaconda prompt. So I'm just going to right click open my terminal and then we're going to create the contact environment that uh, activate the contact environment that we already created in the uh, uh, past video so i'm just going to contact activate gee -E, and then just type Jupyter notebook hit enter it's open Jupyter notebook uh, within your browser and then you just need to click here 55 uh raster vis the Jupyter notebooks will open then, uh, so this is the uh, the source code. As you can see from here, it's actually quite simple. We are going to just import the library, and then we can add some interactive, uh, uh, create an interactive map. Then we load some uh, Earth Engine data layer. So for example, the DM, it, this is a single uh, band uh, layer. You can also have lens set, also have vector data. And after you uh, add the layer, you can, um, just display the map so we're just going to hit one then you should be able to see here that this is the map and and we can easily customize the map here to whatever uh, color we want so for example i'm just going to simply um, maximize so that you can have a better view of the map so the first uh, layer we're going to uh, visualize is to use the single uh, the, the dm so you can click the upper right corner here if you click the toolbar, uh, it's going to stay there. But if you just hover, uh, it's going to hide the toolbar when you move away from the toolbar. And you need to click the layers uh, icon. And from here, you can turn the layer on and off. For example, so first we're going to look at the DM. You can scroll uh, to the left. Uh, it's going to change the opacity. Okay, and you can also turn the layer on and off. Click the uh, the gear icon. So this one will pull up the, the uh, dialog. As you can see, when you uh, open this one, uh, it's going to automatically uh, load it the create the color map for you. So uh, because earlier when we add the data layer, we actually ha already have the color palette. So when you add a layer uh, to the map, if it already has the minimum and the maximum and also the uh, color palette or even the opacity then this interactive GUI is going to read from this uh, lowest parameters. So as you can see from this one here, uh, the minimum and the maximum, uh, this is the range, also the opacity, right? Uh, also the gamma and the color palette here, this one come from here. So whatever you want to set, 
uh, you can actually provide your own uh, color map. If you don't provide one, uh, you can you will be able to select from here from the drop down list to to create one for yourself. So this is how easy it is to create the uh, the color map. So next, I'm going to show you. For example, I want to select maybe another color map, and by the uh, first, you probably want to select a classes because basically here you provide the palette, and this one we have five classes, right? So uh, if you don't if you just select any sometimes it might be too many so for example if you select this one uh maybe blues right so you will show you this one here this is the color map is going to create it but by default it might be too many color here in this palette so if you select if you scroll all the way to the right usually it's 255 uh color so it might be too much and uh usually you just need maybe 10 or, or, or maximum 12 usually is sufficient the color map here, it doesn't really change because it's going to uh, linearly uh, interpret the, the color. So it, it's, the result will be pretty much the same, but it's much shorter. So later when we import uh, the uh, parameters, uh, you will be much shorter. So you usually want to select from here a number of classes. And then what you need to do is just click apply. It's going to automatically apply uh, the uh, color palette. So basically it replace the existing uh, layer and so now you have this new layer you can continue to make changes to whatever layer you want so if, for example you can scroll down and so the next one maybe let's try green right so this is the dm so all the color palettes here come from the map prop lib library um the color map so i think this this one here is almost 200 so uh you can select from any one of those i can just select the terrain right and first you will see this one is changed right so here you can also change the color and as you can see i just need to maybe just let me clear all of them and let's do it again right if you select uh, you should be able to see the color palette i'm going to do the the train again right if you scroll to the right and if you hit apply it's going to show you here this is the uh, terrain you can also change to something else for example, maybe GIST first, right? You apply, it's going to make changes. You can also make adjustment, for example, the minimum and maximum. So you can change this one if you want, for example, to 5,000. Then the the value here, uh, the color map is also going to automatically uh, rearrange. So if I hit apply, you will see this one right now, it changed from 4,000 to 5,000, right? And you can also change the opacity uh, if you want. Also from the palette here, uh, assume that for example, um, if there's anything you want to customize, you can also uh, add any color to here to this palette. You can also clear off them or you can delete any of those, right? So for example, if at the end you want to add another color, you can select from the color picker here and then go to any color you like after that. Just click this at the bottom. It's going to be added to the end, right? So add it to the end here. And if you hit apply, uh, here it might not be very obvious, but if you uh, maybe change it to a little bit lower, you might see the red color, right? So now you see this red color, and this represents the um, higher elevation values in here. Just to show you, uh, you can you can do a lot of things in here. And also this one. Okay, so this is how you can customize, but keep in mind when you uh, close this one, the the legend, the color map is gone, right? So in case that if you want to keep that one on here, you need to, let me go back to here, show you one more time. I click this one, oh, and then click here. You need to click the legend. So if you click this one, then you will uh, be, the color map will be attached to this layer. So if the layer is turned on, then you have the color map. If it's off, then you won't have that. So click this one and then click apply. Um, oh, sometimes it might be a, a bug. So you need to click maybe uh, one more time. Then you will be in here. So this time, if I close this one, the uh, color map will stay, right? So it has been attached to this layer. And if I turn this one off, the legend will also be turned off. So this is nice way that if you have some data, you want to show the user what the color represent and this is the way to do that okay so you can also um change to 
So let me do it one more time here. You can do it with color map. So if there's like a, a categorical data, you can also have the stamp, uh, step color map if you want, right? So again, let me try here. Maybe change to uh, the other one. And hit apply. Sometimes you need to click uh, twice in order to activate this one. You can also change to the step uh, color map. So the step, if it is uh, categorical data, then you can have this one here. Depends on how many classes you have. You can also change the name, right? So you at, at the end, uh, you can, uh, if you want, maybe let me go back to this one. Let me change maybe just to uh, five classes. You see sometimes there's a, a bug in here. Let me restart in one all. This one is like quite complicated. So behind the scene, there are a lot of components. So um, it's actually very difficult to debug. So now even for this one, sometimes you have, uh, I, I don't know actually how to fix that. Uh, it's just too many things to uh, connect together. Anyway, so let's uh, go back to here one more time just to show you uh, another thing that you might want to use, right? So if once you customize, for example, if I change to hand and then I select uh, another uh, column, for example, terrain, uh, and you can hit apply it's going to change so if you want to keep this uh, color map uh, after you make all the adjustment you can click the import uh, button so if you click the import button it's going to generate the parameters that you want to use right so this is the visualization parameters and this is what is actually being presented here in this uh, interactive GUI so data you can just keep this one so you don't have to use the GUI anymore all you need to do is just to replace this one the VIS parameters with this one, right? So if I copy this one and then I simply just come back to here and then paste this one, right? So this time, if I just run this, oh, uh, provide gamma for a fixed color palette. Okay, so that means we need to remove this one. And let's run again. Okay, so let's turn off the uh, lens data layer. Okay, so now you have this one. Again, this is uh, the way that how you can uh, reuse the visualization parameters. And again, here it doesn't have the color map. So if you want the color map, you still need to go to here and then click this one. And then click the laser. Apply. One more time. Then you still have this one. Okay, so this is for the, the uh, uh, elevation data. You can also do that for uh, multi-spectral bands. So for example, lens set uh, Sentinel or any other uh, multi-spectral band. So this is um, pretty much similar. You can click here uh, to change the opacity. Uh, you can also change the opacity within this interface. As you can see, uh, we, if this um, uh, RGB combination, then you don't really have many options. So you can change the band combination. Uh, if you want, for example, the uh, natural color, uh, five, four three opacity and then hit apply right so now this one this looks like uh it's for still false color but it's uh, close to natural uh natural color then this is how you can change again you can click the import button uh it's going to show you what the parameters look like right visualization uh parameters you can also change to one single band so in here if there's any spectral band you want to visualize uh you can do this one if by default, if you don't change, um, select a color map, uh, it's going to just use the gray uh, scale. So if you just hit apply, now you only have the one spectral band in here. But again, you're welcome to select uh, any color map you like. So for example, you can change to uh, which one? Maybe cool and warm, something like this. And then hit apply, then it should be changed to uh, this. Again, you can also change this uh, the palette if you want. You can create, uh, you can add one, you can delete one. If you want to keep the laser, then you can just do this way and hit apply. And again, you can also click the import to keep the visualization parameters for your script uh, if needed, right? And then if you hit close, then you only have this uh, color map in here attached to the data layer. Then you can turn the layer on and off. Okay, so this is how you can visualize the raster data layer. So uh, you can uh, use your own uh, data set uh, to check this one out. And uh, so this is makes things easier because you don't need to write any line of code. Uh, you can quickly visualize the data set 
and uh, select whatever color map that you uh, prefer okay so uh, that's all for this uh, video i hope to see you in the uh, next one take care bye bye